So as we conclude 2023, I wanted to revisit a video we did last year where I asked dozens of amazing content creators in the watch world, what watch did they wear the most and why did they decide to wear it the most throughout the year? The only requirement was they had to say all of that in less than 45 seconds. The lineup of creators we have this year is even larger. So let's start the clock and get this one rolling. My most worn watch of 2023 was the Grand Seiko SLGH005 White Birch. This watch is known mostly for its striking dial texture, which in turn is the inspiration for its name and speaks for itself. However, what ultimately sold me on this watch was the movement. The 9SA5 is a high B caliber with a proprietary escapement that took Grand Seiko nine years to develop. It comes with a phenomenal power reserve for a five Hertz caliber with 80 hours, all while looking stunning and paying reverence to Grand Seiko's storied history of producing high beats back to the 1960s. To top it off, the watch also wears well on my wrist, works with nearly any outfit, and now has special sentimental value as it was also the watch that I wore on my wrist when I got married earlier this year. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Hey Teddy, it's Michael and Sam. Christian isn't here from Theo and Harris. Christian is actually, he's on vacation. Either way, we're talking about two of the watches that I wore most this year, because Sam is so new, we'll go over mine. Teddy, first. nice to meet you. I know we haven't met yet, but heard great things. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll go over mine first. This is actually my favorite watch that I have right now. This is the Hamilton Pilot Pioneer Mechanical. I like that it's 36 millimeters. I like that it's hand wound. I like that it looks like a little pebble. Ooh. This is a historical re-edition of a watch where they really didn't change a single thing about it. Love that. I love that too. This is arguably one of the dumbest watches of all time. Time, which is one of Michael's favorite watches of all time. Yes, it is. This is a CWNT solid state watch. Yes, this is a Casio F91 module, but it's cast in an oil-filled resin. So technically, you can dive very deep with this watch if it holds up, but you can't change the time. You can't use the backlight feature. You can't change the battery. It is totally sealed. You can't even change the strap or the You can't adjust side. the strap. <laughs> Yeah. Getting this on my wrist was it's hard. It's a Brooklyn hipster coffee shop watch, but it's one of the coolest digital watches I've seen. Right now, you'll see the time is wrong. It's actually 1.20 p.m. It's because you can't change the time for daylight savings. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Teddy. Again, nice to meet you, and happy holidays, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hope you had a good year and you bought some nice watches. The watch I wore the most this year was my Felipe Piccolic Moon Phase 1 GPAG nominated watch. Unfortunately, it didn't win, but I think it was a worthy contender. I love the watch because it's a limited edition of 20 pieces. I happen to have the number 2 out of 20. It's a very special piece for me because I have a good relationship with Felipe since the very beginning. I own a few watches and this is my favorite so far. Moon Phase on the dial, exposed gears, beautiful full anglage on the movement and you can also see the moon face from the case back hope everybody had a good year special thanks to ted and his team i hope you guys reach 1 million subscribers very soon happy holidays and keep collecting hey teddy and merry christmas happy holidays to everyone watching if you don't know me i'm Brittany. i have a watch youtube channel it's okay if you've not watched it before <laughs> And my most worn watch of 2023 isn't even my watch. It's one I've stolen from my husband's watch roll, his Rolex GMT Master II BLRO. On the Jubilee, the best bracelet for this watch. It's probably too big for me really, but I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed wearing it. The contrast bezel, high legibility, and keeping track of my home time in Toronto, Canada. Thank you, Teddy, for doing this, inviting me on, and I can't wait to see what everyone else has been wearing for 2023. Hey Teddy, thanks for the invite buddy and it's hard to think it's been another year which is just crazy but the watch that I've been wearing the most this year is unfortunately the watch that I've been wearing the most the past few years and that's my Rolex Explorer 2. This is reference 226570 and we get to do a lot of travel as part of this job don't we uh, and this is my travel companion and it's getting quite a few battle scars as, as part of that which just makes it even sexier. Happy holidays to you Teddy and everyone watching and bring on 2024. See you soon. Hello, my name is Andrew McCutcheon. I'm the founder of Time and Tide and one of your three amigos at About Effing Time. Now, the watch I wore the most this year in 2023 was this one, the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer Solograph in titanium. And what made this watch such a daily wrist choice was this slim Le Jupere solar powered quartz movement. Now, surprisingly, what actually makes this watch a joy to wear on the wrist every day, aside from its ruggedness with the screw down crown and slim case profile and hackability onto a Bark and Jack NATO strap, nor is it the mirror polished indices and applied logo that's quite attractive to look at. It's this very curious, translucent gray dial 
As the light hits it during the day, you will see the character of that dial change from like a silky gray to black to, to a strobing sun ray type of dial. It is beautiful. And it was actually a photograph I took with musician James McVeigh that sealed the win for the Tag Heuer. Look at the way this watch actually presents in your photography. You are going to love it. Now, I hope you have the best Christmas and holiday season ever. And Teddy, I hope you have a good one too. Thank you for the invitation. I'll see you on the next video. Welcome to About Effing Time. Uh, what? No, really. Teddy, um, thank you so much for getting me on to uh, talk about my um, watch that has not left my wrist. It is the Tima Kazawa Tag Heuer Carrera. The watch that we launched earlier this year in Japan and it was so amazing and this watch is the embodiment of that launch. Um, I want to say that it really was amazing to work with Tima Kazawa and Tag Heuer to do this. Thank you so much for having me on this and uh, yes, I hope you have a great Christmas. Hi Teddy, hope you're well. Thank you so much for another invitation. I really appreciate that. Last year I said we need to do a video in 2023. We didn't get around to that, so we need to make this happen in 2024. Because 2024 is gonna be the year you're gonna hit 1 million subscribers. I don't know which watch I wore the most, but I switched the most between three watches. One of which was the Jules Nardin Freak X Ops, a watch I helped launch together with Jules Nardin in Shanghai, China, an incredible experience. Next to that, same as last year, my Audemars Piquet Royal Oak 26331 SD, the white dial, the Panda Audemars Piquet Royal Oak Chronograph. A watch I wore when my son was born last year, but also worn when my daughter was born 10 days ago. And next to that, I wore my Richard Mille RM30 Ultimate, a watch that I thoroughly enjoy. The Quartz NTPT in that case, makes it an extremely durable watch. In comparison, if you wear gold or even a steel Richard Mille Arm 11, you get a lot of scratches, you get a lot of dents. You don't have that with the quartz NTPT case of the RM30, a watch I really, really love. Thank you so much. I wanna wish everyone a fantastic Christmas, all your subscribers a fantastic Christmas, and a happy new year. 2024 is gonna be big for you. I can't wait to see you with your well-deserved gold plaque of a million subscribers in 2024. Hello, my name is Jenny. I'm from the Jenny L YouTube channel, and my most worn watches this year has to be by far my Nomos Club Neomatic. It has been a lifesaver. I'm a mommy now, so I needed my watch to be, you know, lightweight, easy to read, um, not scratching the baby. So it's got the fabric stuff right here. And yeah, this one has been doing the job like a pro. Um, I'm so happy with it. And yeah, thank you so much, Teddy, for including me in this. To everyone watching, I'm wishing you a very happy new year. Happy holidays, uh, frohe Weihnachten. And if I'm not the last person in this, um, Let's get to the next one. Bye. Hello, Teddy. Hello, everyone. And season's greetings to you all. This year, I have been mostly wearing my Christopher Ward The 12 because despite sounding like a Stephen King novel, The 12 is actually the perfect watch for me. Not only does it go a long way to replacing the Royal Oak I once had, its 100 meter water resistance is also more than enough to withstand my tears after selling that Royal Oak for $7,500. Now, I know what you're thinking. You really seem to like that watch very much. Perhaps too much. Look, I'll say this. I'm a tightwad and the 12 is very agreeable to that. I'm such a skinflint, I ordered it on the rubber strap because it's cheaper. Well, there you go. Bar humbug. Merry Christmas. Teddy, thank you for including me in this video. I'm a big fan. Hi, I'm Craig, founder of Wrist Enthusiast, and I'm excited to be part of this video. The watch I've worn most in 2023 might seem a bit basic, but it's the Rolex GMT Master II 126710 BLRO, or Pepsi as most of us call it. And there's a reason why I wore this watch the most this year. Besides it just being a classic and good looking watch, it's probably my favorite travel watch because it's rock solid, can take a beating, and also has that second time zone. I've probably traveled more this year than ever in my life for both watches and pleasure. I was in Dubai last month for Dubai Watch Week. I've also been to England, Norway, Italy, and Los Angeles. Being able to track that local time and my home time in New York meant the Pepsi was pretty much glued to my wrist. 
Thanks again, Teddy. It was really cool to be a part of this. Hey, Teddy, thank you so much, as always, for including me on your annual roundup. Um, 2023, what a year. So many great watches. This, however, was not one of them, but it was the one I wore the most. It is the FP Jean Elegant 48mm uh, Titanium, originally made for female clients of Jean who were asking for watches that, that, that they wanted. And this beautiful tourno shape, dial, hands, numerals, all just all Jean. Everything you could imagine from a design perspective, including this incredible quartz caliber. And I know I'm going to get shot down in the comments for it, but quartz caliber made in gold, finished to the same level as any other Jean out there um, with this incredible technology that it recognizes the internal computer knows what time it is when you pick it up after 20 minutes. So all in all, um, an incredible watch, but primarily the reason it's been on the wrist throughout the whole summer and now into the winter is it's just insanely comfortable. I love the design and I love the comfort. Until next year, thank you so much and have a, a great Christmas, everyone watching. Thank you as always. Hello, Teddy. Thanks for having me. Hello, Teddy's viewers. This is Jody from the Just One More Watch channel. My most worn watch over the last 12 months, it's not even close. It's my Citizen Chronomaster and it's quartz. Quartz is a dirty word sometimes in the community and I just don't understand why. It just makes so much sense to have one or two high quality quartz pieces in your collection and they don't get much higher quality than this. It's Citizen's premium JDM Grand Seiko competitor. It has a handmade washi paper dial, incredible sapphire, it's solar powered, it has a perpetual calendar, plus or minus five seconds per year accuracy. It is truly set and forget. It has been the perfect watch for me to wear in and around my other pieces, both personal pieces and review pieces. I did plenty of research before I bought this watch and it has not disappointed me one bit. Thanks again, Teddy. See you all in 2024. Happy holidays and happy collecting. What's going on, Teddy and friends? I'm Jory Goodman from the Time Teller channel. Thank you so much for having me. Now, when I think of my 2023 wristwatch, has to be my Doxa Sub 200 Seagraph 2. This Seagraph 2 is versatile enough to go traveling with. I was just in Hawaii not long ago. We did hikes, we went swimming, we even went on a run, we went to nice dinners. With this watch on my wrist, it felt right at home. You know, this watch with its deep blue dial, the domed sapphire, it's just very sophisticated and refined without feeling like you have to baby it. And it plays with the light so well. You're gonna find yourself staring at this watch all the time when it's on your wrist. So happy New Year, everyone. I'm wishing you all the best. And Teddy, I love you. Thanks for the invite, Teddy. I appreciate it. I hope you and those watching have a wonderful Christmas. The watch I've worn the most in the past year has been a long-term grail level type of goal. So for years, I've wanted to be able to buy an all gold watch and a full size yellow gold day date with a champagne dial has always been at the top of this list. So I was very fortunate to make this goal a reality this past April. I know it's only been eight months, but I couldn't be happier with this purchase. This is the 40 millimeter day date with the deconstructed applied Roman numerals and the all gold look, this monotone look, makes the watch perfectly versatile. There's nothing it doesn't match. There's no outfit that it doesn't elevate. It's a timeless design, and I think it will still look fantastic in another 50 years. I love the weight of the precious metal, and this President bracelet has been my favorite out of the Oyster and Jubilee styles that I've previously tried from Rolex. So outside of putting on review watches for wrist shots, or perhaps putting on a diver or a G-Shock for a camp out or a rafting trip. I just don't have the desire to wear other watches. And I know that this feeling won't last forever, but as of right now, this thing is dominating my wrist time and I couldn't be happier about it. It even makes me wonder, could I be a one watch guy again? I don't think so, but it makes me think. Uh, thank you, Teddy. I, I wish you and your team nothing but the best. Hey, it's Derek from Minutemon, and it might be a better flex if I say Vacheron or JLC, but honestly, this Seiko Diver SJE093 got the most wear time in 2023. It's Seiko's first diver watch, nicknamed the 62 MAS, recreated this year, and every time I put it on, it just feels perfect. I love the 38 millimeter size, the gray dial goes well with everything, the polished and faceted hands and indices are elegant with tons of loom, plus the new 6L37 movement runs about one second per day for me, not too shabby. I like that it doesn't draw much attention 
and has been with me on countless trips from camping, hiking, snorkeling, and the only thing left is to take it scuba diving. Ultimately, it's my idea of a Seiko exit watch because I sold all of my other Seikos for this. Anyways, it's been a minute. Happy holidays and new year, and thank you, Teddy, and your team for having me on. Hey, I'm Evan, also known as You're Terrific. And this year, I don't actually know what watch I wore the most, but I do know what watch I wore the most since I got it in September. This Tudor Pelagos FXD Alinghi Red Bull Racing Edition Chronograph. This thing has been awesome to wear. I really never expected to like a chronograph named and branded after whatever an Alinghi is. It's a, it's a boat or is it a, it's a sports race? It doesn't matter. I love how this looks, how it wears. I also think that it's it's kind of a bargain, which is dumb because for $5,000, nobody needs this thing. And yet, here I am, wearing and loving Tudor's first ever carbon composite watch. Hey Teddy, how's it going? Miguel here with SoCal Watch Review. So your team asked me, Miguel, what was your most worn watch in 2023? Well, these two are from the micro brand space. They're about, one of them about $1,000, the other one is in the $500, $600 range. One of them is the Canopy Wake 1, and the other one is Zenea, the Ula Diver. Both of these watches represent tremendous value in terms of aesthetics. Both of them have Swiss movements, on-the-fly adjustments, very well finished. There is just so much value with the smaller stuff, with the smaller guys. Not only that, but also the fact that you get a chance to actually talk to the owners. Something very special about that. So anyway, those are my picks. Thank you again for the invite. Merry Christmas and stay humble. The watch I wore the most this year was my Alexander Shorakoff Winter, and I think if you had to boil it down to one reason, it's that it just brings a smile to my face. I think that's what watches should be about at the end of the day, and this one does it for me. It is maybe not the best time teller, as there are really no dedicated hour markers on the watch, but overall, it just is a lot of beautiful things to look at. You have the gray, silver, metallic branches that really shine and grab the light depending on what your surroundings are. You have the snow underneath that's supposed to look like snow that has done as diamond dust powder that has this very sparkly, subtle appearance to it. You have the beautiful spade handset that has this great curved shape, this heat bluing that pops great against the gray dial. There's just a lot to love here and I love it. So thank you for having me, Teddy. Thank you for putting this together and have a great 2024, everybody. I always liked the Marathon GPM steel reissue, but it wasn't nearly my most worn watch until I changed the strap. It shipped with a rubbish 16mm nylon band, so I was pleased to rediscover the additional silicone strap they sent me, which I'd previously lost. In terms of comfort, silicone's hard to beat, and the two-piece setup reduced the thickness even further. What sets this watch apart for me is the truly unique case shape. Rather than a standalone fixed bezel, this model, now named the Officer's Mechanical, has a case that curves smoothly yet steeply upwards, meaning you almost always get a beautiful gradation of light across the matte surface. If there's one thing I like my watches to be, it's interesting, and this Marathon certainly is. It's really distinctive and overall great to look at. Hi everyone, Teddy, thank you for having me. Watch I've worn most this year, two watches, if that's allowed. If we're talking purely numbers, the amount of hours on the wrist, then the Tudor Black Bay 54 is the winner. This piece feels to me like the result of 10 years worth of work. Tudor has now finally cracked the code with understanding case proportions, how these watches wear on the wrist, and it's so versatile for that reason on any strap configuration. So I wear it to the gym, traveling, this has been my go-to. But if we're talking purely about the enjoyment factor, the watch I have worn most this year is the Zenith A384 El Primero. A great reissue, a grail watch of mine, excellent wearing on the wrist, and it's just fun. I wear it on a NATO strap with an OEM deployment because I'm weird like that. And fundamentally, I think that's what makes for such a great piece. One that's not only versatile, easy to go to on a day-to-day -day basis, but also one that continually draws you back, inviting you to experience it more. Thanks, Teddy, and hey, everyone. It's Mark from Average Bros and the host of On The Wrist From Off The Cuff. My most worn watch of 2023 has to be my Seiko SLA-017, which my lovely wife, Crystal, gifted me for my 40th birthday. This Prospects reissue was originally released back in 2017 as a premium recreation of Seiko's very first dive watch, the iconic 62MAS. Powered by a Grand Seiko based 8L35 movement, this 39mm diver packs a 50 hour power reserve with a smooth 4 hertz sweep. So it is for all of those reasons and so many more that I don't have time to explain that really just make this the ultimate Seiko diver for me. Thanks guys. In honor of being on this incredible show, I've gone quadruple wristed. 
<laughs> yes, these are the four watches I have worn the most this year, starting with the Black Bay 58. In my opinion, the best dive watch money can buy and gives me exactly what I want in a dive watch. Next up is my Seiko limited edition 55th anniversary of the first Seiko 5 sports watch. Next up, the bargain budget beater I should have bought ages ago, the A163W. Yes, it may have more type fonts than a newspaper cover and last but definitely not least, my Vertex MP45 Heritage Edition. And it is in the trade what they call a mono pusher chronograph. Season's greetings and happy new year to all watch lovers. Can I come back next year? Hey guys, this past year, the watch that I wore the most is my Vacheron Constantin Overseas Gen 2 Reference 47040. Now first, I really like the design. Uh, I think it's brutalist in a sense that it has these hard angles in a very utilitarian aesthetic, although it is intended to be a more sophisticated sporting watch. Now, it doesn't scream tool watch, but at least in my opinion, it whispers it. I also like that it's under the radar. It's not easily recognizable. That's something that I'm drawn to uh, and watches that are not recognizable outside of the collector community, I find myself wearing the most. So thanks again for another great year, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. God bless. What's up, Teddy? It's Watch Chris. Thank you so much for including me. The watch that I wore the most in 2023 has to be my most dangerous watch. It's my 50 Fathoms Aqualung. This is a watch that was worn by Jacques Cousteau and arguably one of the most important watches of all time. It did get a hefty amount of radium on the dial and that bezel. I bought a Geiger counter specifically for this watch. And of course, I'll show you the results up on the screen. However, that has not deterred me from wearing it. It's always been a grail watch of mine. And when I purchased one this year, I wore it a lot. Hey guys, I'm Max from Watch Crunch, and the watch that I haven't been able to take off my wrist recently has been this Vertex M45 Heritage. Now, Vertex is a name that traces all the way back to the Dirty Dozen. Uh, on the wrist, this watch feels like somewhere between a overbuilt Hamilton to a half price IWC. Now, it is kind of a big boy being a mono pusher chronograph at like 14 and a half millimeters thick. So I have it on the new Anachronous Zero Pass strap. Uh, looks like a NATO, but nothing between the case back and your wrist. And did I mention the loom blocks that serve as our indices are just out of this world? Anyway, hope you guys have a great holiday season. I'll see you in 24. Hey everyone, Eric here from Loom Shot. My most worn watch of 2023 is this beauty right here. This is the Basher and Constan 56, the most affordable model that you can purchase from a brand yet packed with a whole bunch of cool features that I explained in my full review video. Simple time and date with open six and nines, nicely finished movement with a 22 karat gold rotor, and my favorite, a perfectly integrated quick micro adjust feature on the butterfly clasp. I'm a huge fan of versatile casual watches, and this 56 definitely delivers that experience. If Rolex has the Datejust and Patek has the Calatrava, then Vacheron has the 56. That kind of makes sense. Thanks, Hedy. Happy holidays, everyone. Hello, my name is Andre from Brave Beaters, and my most worn watch of the year was the Doxa Sub 300 Caribbean in Carbon. A personal choice which offers a severe contradiction between a vintage inspired diver and a super sports car, resulting into an ultra lightweight forged carbon design. So a total distinct Doxa due to its friendly and warm tactile surface combined with the tonneau arch profile and an integrated curved rubber which makes it a true experience on the wrist. It is extremely lightweight, comfortable and precise, the ideal watch to grab and go every time you want to feel something different. Happy holidays and have a brave 2024. My most worn watch this year was Omega Speedmaster, the Mood Watch. I have the previous generation with the caliber 1861 movement, the older version of the bracelet and a Hasselite crystal. There is a very good reason why this watch is iconic. Some watches are style over function. This is one of these rare cases where it's both style and function. It has that iconic look, yet it still has the substance to back it up. I'm not exactly tracking which watch I wear on what days, but every time I see it in a watch box, my hand reaches for it. At least once a week, it finds its spot on my wrist. If you have a moon watch in your collection, you know how fantastic these watches really are. And if you do have one, try it on a Velcro strap. 
it looks great and it's very comfortable. Happy holidays and thanks for being awesome watch enthusiasts. Teddy, thank you so much for having me. My name is Harrison from the Chisholm Hunter channel as always, and this is my top watch of 2023. It is the Amiga Seamaster 300 meter white dial, Coscan Meta certified movement, iconic helium escape valve, and also I fitted it with a NATO strap. I also have quite a sentimental attachment to this watch. I used to watch James Bond with my dad, and since then this watch kind of represents my dad. Thank you so much for having me. I truly am a huge fan of the channel. All the best for 2024, and hopefully we can film together real soon. Hi everyone, watches with Abdullah here. The watch I've worn the most this year has to be my Seiko SBB155. Now the design and the specifications were the main reason, the logical reason for me to choose this particular model. But it's more than that. I bought this watch when I decided to take everything I had learned about watches, about creating media content, and just go all in and make it into a profession that I love. This is on my wrist when I'm behind the camera shooting content, when I'm traveling for work, when I'm editing videos. Every time I get a new gig, I just look at it and go, we can do this, let's do this. It's like a companion, but I love you too, wife. Anyway, thanks again for having me, Teddy, and a happy new year to all of you. Hi, this is Tim from K-Spec Watches, and my most worn watch this year is a very important part of my collection. This is the 90s Oris Pointed Day 36 millimeters, very classy watch. And this piece might be 30 years old now, so that's not enough for a real vintage watch, but it delivers exactly the spirit, the sensation of history on the wrist. Classy case, plexiglass crystal, some sort of a tuxedo dial, and of course the pointed date with that charming red moon. And you can dive deeper, then you will find tons of details. It's not a black tuxedo, it's a navy blue. And you may spot this fine pattern of a vinyl record. And the entire thing looks slightly beaten up. Yes, it's not a prop, I really wear that. And every time I share this watch on social media, people send me offers, and then I always say, keeper, keeper, keeper. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, making this video for Teddy. Teddy, my good friend, Teddy, Teddy, Teddy. Ho, 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 Teddy, Teddy. What watch did I wear the most in 2023? There's only one watch which fills the criteria. Bluesy, bluesy, bluesy. That's right, 2022, I had a horrendous burglary. All my watches besides the watch I was wearing stolen. One watch I craved, one watch I wanted, one watch I can't take off my wrist. Bluesy, bluesy, bluesy. It's the bluesy, guys. It's the bluesy. It's the bluesy. The two-tone bluesy. 40 mil. I like the gold print on the dial. I like the slightly smaller clasp on the 40 mil instead of the 41. I love this piece to death. The bluesy. It's the one and done. It's everything you could want in a watch. Teddy, my watch for 2023 was the bluesy. Bluesy, guys. Bluesy, bluesy, bluesy. Vote for your favorite watch. I love my bluesy. But guys, that is all we have here and what a lineup of creators. If you are not familiar with any of the faces in this video, I will link to all the different channels down below and I would strongly recommend checking them out, subscribing. There's a lot of great creators out there and I wanna thank all of them for participating in this. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's also a great indication that maybe you wanna see more of this year after year, make this a tradition. Also, finally, what was your most worn watch of 2023? Leave a comment down below and say why it was your most worn watch. But all right, guys, that's all we have for this video. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.